Hey, what's going on? This is Jake with Exodus on this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs. We're finally going to Wisconsin. This has been greatly requested by all of you. And boy, did we stack up an incredible trip. We stopped with Jeff Sturgis, Dan Infault, Jared Scheffler, and a bunch of great people from Wisconsin that had great stories and big bucks. To kick off this trip, we're sharing an episode with Sam Ubel, who films with Chase Nation and also used to film with Jared Scheffler. And you get to hear about all of his bucks, his hunts, and also see some giant muskies. So we hope you guys enjoy this. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Hey guys, I'm Sam Ubel. Welcome to my crib. So here it is, this is kind of the, uh, the humble abode. We're pretty simple. We have uh, all the deer downstairs. We're up here, this is kind of, uh, I guess you'd call it our family space. So my daughter Adelaide, she is uh, five years old, just barely five. And um, it's not much to this, but what's kind of neat is this here was my wife's first buck, is her first deer ever. I remember that day like it was yesterday because we got another deer that's downstairs that I'll tell you the story too, but it was snowing like crazy. She was pregnant and she got herself out of bed. I was two hours ahead of her with the cameraman going down a river. So she got herself out of bed, drove there in the snowstorm, walked out to the stand and ended up killing this one, which is really darn neat and pretty special. So uh, a lot of meaning to this one. And that's why we hang it in this room because it was uh, while she was pregnant with Adelaide. I'm gonna show you Camden's room, it's pretty cool. So my son Camden, he is, uh, he's very young. <laughs> he's three, well, he's four, four yesterday. But as you can see, he's got a lot of bows. He's got a lot of guns. I mean, the kid's got more bows and guns than his old man. I don't have a lot of guns, but if I did, I don't think I'd have this many. It's kind of scary, <laughs> don't judge. Um, and then every time we go shed hunting, and I didn't show you this in my daughter's room, but she's got the same kind of thing, but she's got probably twice as many. Um, every time we go shed hunting in the spring, it's something we do just to get out and exercise and keep them outdoors. If we see uh, you know, a shed laying on the ground, they always scoop it up, or you know, if there's a dead head, we'll cut the antlers off, and she'll put it in a little circle like this around the jar, and, or he'll put it in a circle around the jar and collect feathers. There's always turkey feathers out there, sometimes hawk feathers, and. We've even found owl feathers and any kind of feather, it doesn't matter. Let's go downstairs and look at the deer. So I should start, one thing um, you should know about me is I run a show called Chase Nation. And um, one of my guys on the team, he does a lot of metal art and made this and some other stuff that you'll, uh, you'll see hanging around. But it is so cool. He made one for every guy on our team, which was uh, 14 of us. Um, this deer here, um, you know, I, I just told you the story about my wife and being pregnant with uh, my daughter when she shot that one that was on the wall upstairs. This deer was killed uh, two years later um, while she was pregnant with my son. And so this, this, this deer is pretty special to us too. And in fact, my dad, he lives a, a couple hours away from here, but he came down and he hunted with us for like the first time in a very long time. And it was really neat because not only did Christy get this big buck, but um, my dad got a nice buck too that I ended up jumping when I was walking out to my stand. You, you probably can't tell from, from the video, from pictures, but the bases on this thing are just heavy. And he's got this really, really awesome hook on the back of his brow that just slays me. So beautiful cape. I couldn't be more proud of her for that. This one, since it's front and center, this deer here uh, was a deer that I had been watching for three years out on uh, a piece that I hunt. We watched them from a hay field every summer, and then during the season I had them twice, uh, up close and personal, but I didn't seal the deal. Ended up uh, finding him dead on the property. He appeared to be hit by a car. So while I wish I would have been able to put an arrow through him, uh, at least I ended up with him and I kind of got a little bit of closure to what happened to him but he's a big deer, he's 157 inches, um, pretty awesome. Uh, this one I just got back yesterday, but this beast is uh, got a lot, of, uh, a lot of stories to tell about this deer, to be honest with you. I shot him opening day of the 2020 uh, archery season here in Wisconsin. Uh, I was in North Dakota 
um, for, I think we were there for eight days, my wife and I, filming and hunting. We were just running and gunning, and um, I got into a spot where I got pretty good reception. I got a trail camera photo, and it was him. I was very familiar with him. We had been watching him all summer long, um, both you know from the edge of a hayfield and on trail camera. But um, man, he was on a four-day pattern, so every four days he was popping through my piece that I was hunting, which is only about 12 acres. And uh, it was four days to the day before opening day in Wisconsin. So I just remember thinking, you know, if he sticks to this pattern he's been on the last month and a half, I hope opening day we get him. So we come home from North Dakota. Um, my buddy Steve, part of Chase Nation as well, he comes down to film. We go get up in the stand, we hang a couple sets, and it starts raining like crazy on us. Uh, it was nasty and really, really windy. Um, but we sat there and, and toughed it out. And sure enough, they were like sheep jumping over the fence. They came across the road, jumping over the fence and right out into the hay field we were sitting on the edge of and eventually made their way down to us. And, uh, and I was able to get an arrow in this guy. Yeah, he's got a beast of a body on him. And Aaron Wolf, Wolfside Taxidermy, did a phenomenal job on this dude. He even surprised me with uh, our trademark, a Chase Nation trademark on the back of this leather here, which is uh, a really awesome surprise. And then just for, uh, you know, to um, put the icing on the cake on his whiskers here, he uh, added the raindrops from whatever day it was. So I couldn't be more happy with how this dude turned out, but we haven't even got him on the wall yet. So for now, he's on the floor. <laughs> This one doesn't have a whole lot of size to him, and that's okay, because this deer is very, very meaningful to me. This is my first ever 10-pointer. Um, I don't know what that means to some guys, but in my circle of friends, a 10-pointer was a pretty special thing. When you get your first buck is one thing, and then when you get your first 10-pointer, it's another thing. And I don't know why, but for 10 years, all I could shoot were 8s and 9-pointers, but I couldn't get that 10, so when I finally got him, uh, much to my wife's dismay, I was getting him shoulder mounted. And so he always has a place on the wall no matter what. I don't care how small he looks next to anything else in the future, he'll always be up there. So pretty neat story to him. This deer here, I called him, and I'm not a big deer namer, uh, but I did call him Candlestick just because of this kind of weird uh, main beam that just sort of flares up. It's almost I don't even know what to call it, it's weird, but I've seen a few deer like this since then, so I know he's not as unique as, as I thought he was, but he is still pretty unique. Um, I ended up missing this deer on Halloween uh, with my bow. I shot right over the top of him, and uh, I ended up killing him mid-November, um, and, and that was pretty, pretty special to me. And he's a real old deer. The taxidermist said he was probably seven and a half or eight and a half. This deer is... Um, I, every deer is special to me, just like any hunter. But this one has a really uh, soft spot in my heart because the work that went into this one. It's not only the same morning that my wife killed the, the, her first deer when she was pregnant with my daughter Adelaide, but the work that went into killing this deer is something to behold. Um, we were, this is, these are all Wisconsin deer in southeast Wisconsin. And um, my cameraman and I went out the night before uh, opening day of Wisconsin shotgun season and we were scouting from the edge of the field along the road and saw this dude for the first time. I'd never seen him before so I don't know where he came from. He was right in front of a ground blind that I had set up for my wife and I thought you know what tomorrow morning Christy's probably gonna kill that deer. Well she ended up going to a different blind that I put her in and my cameraman and I paddled down this river this super wicked snowstorm probably one of the worst snowstorms I can remember in history. Uh, at least for an opening day of gun hunting. And uh, we wore waders after we got out of the, the, the boat and we waded through the marsh to get to this pretty nasty tree that I had picked out for some reason. It was a bad idea because, I mean, it's a good idea because I killed one, but it was a bad idea because there weren't a whole lot of branches. So there's nothing to block the wind that was hitting us in the face. 20 minutes after uh, uh, opening hour started, um, this dude came out in the cattails and he didn't go very far. And when we found him, it was only 30 minutes later, and he was already covered in snow. Uh, this deer here, this is another, I mean, another one with history. Um, I got a trail camera picture of him when he was uh, either two and a half or three and a half. So he's, here he's either four and a half or he's five and a half. Uh, he used to sport splits on this side, and he was starting on that side. Um, but, you know, when I killed him, it was a year after the first time I got a picture. 
the, the, the year after the picture, um, well, the year I got the picture, I killed a different deer, so I, I wasn't hunting anymore. And the year after, I didn't see him. He was ghost. One year later, and uh, I set up on this really sweet spot that was along the edge of a cow pasture. It was cow pasture on one side, cattails on the other, and then there was bedding. And I had him dialed to be bedded in here based on what I was getting from my trail cameras. So the idea was if we had the right wind, it would be blowing through the cattails and he could see out over the pasture and he would take that line to go north to this uh, bean field. So he's another early season deer, you can tell from this early season cape. But it was so cool how it worked out. He used his nose to make sure he could smell what he couldn't see from the cattails and he was watching out over that pasture the whole time. And then I shot him at 12 yards. He didn't look up, he should have looked up. <laughs> Uh, and this deer, um, this deer is, is, is super cool. He's, he's really big. Uh, he's got tines for days. And I think the tallest one is like 13 and three quarters, which is this two here. Uh, it's just stupid how tall these tines are. This is a uh, Jefferson County deer, part of Chase Nation, a good friend of mine, Matt Hazel. He, uh, he said, well, you know what? You're having a, you're kind of struggling this season. You want to come out and try by me? I said, sure. He goes, you know what, I, I got a friend that's got a small piece. He's got a lot of deer out there and it's not really been hunted. Let me see if he'll let us go out there for a day. So he calls the, the friend of his, his name's Jesse. And Matt goes out there after getting permission. He throws a stand 35 feet up in an old, uh, I don't know if it's an old hickory tree. And I, I'll never forget how scared I was going up in this tree. Uh, I, I, I was never afraid of heights when I was younger, but I found out I was afraid of heights when I got up in this tree stand because it was kind of cocked like this and was a little uncomfortable. Uh, we had about a 140 class 10 pointer that had really dark bases and ivory tips. I was watching that deer through the scope. This is rifle season now. And um, Matt couldn't get on him with the camera. And finally he gets on him, he's like, I'm on him. And I'm like, I'm off. So we back and forth like that a few times. And then eventually um, the deer was gone. So we were kind of beating ourselves up and Matt says, uh, man, I'm hungry, should we just get down and go get breakfast. I said, let's just give it five more minutes. So uh, it was like on the dot. I started standing up to tell Matt, all right, man, we can pack it up, let's go. And I saw this dude come cruising through the CRP and the rest is history. All right, this deer here, he's not huge, but if, uh, if you've ever seen a picture floating around online of this uh, really cool looking canoe with stripes on it, on a river with a buck off the front. That's me in the back paddling. Um, we always call it the canoe buck. But this, um, I hunted a couple of seasons with Jared Scheffler from Whitetail Adrenaline. And um, on one of those occasions, the first time actually, we were hunting Minnesota and we took this uh, river about two and a half miles upstream. So the river was real rocky and shallow at points. So we were out of the boat, just like dragging it against the current. And we were doing whatever we could to get to the backside of this public that had really hard access. You'd have had to go up and down, hoofing over these um, big, big ridges and, and kind of like cliffs to get to the riverside. So we thought, why not go through the work and get there ourselves? So we get in there and we walk maybe 400 yards and there's a bunch of scrapes. So we kind of you know, crouch down and, and wait for about 15 minutes. And sure enough, here comes this 14 pointer and he comes and starts making a rub. And I was looking at him like, he's got to be maybe 30 yards. Well, he was about 42 yards. So I shot right underneath his armpit. And you can imagine, you know, you get an opportunity to hunt with Jared and Whitetail Adrenaline and you miss a deer. It ate me up. And uh, I was really embarrassed. And I'm like, great, everybody gets to see me miss this awesome deer. So my attitude was kind of sour. Jared... He had a different thing in mind. He's like, well, I kind of want to check out the rest of this piece. Do you mind if we just go down and then go up the ridge and then we'll just travel the top side and look down and see if anything's working the benches. We get to the top of this ridge and we go about 50 more yards and he grabs the back of my shirt and he tugs it and he goes, there's one. And we both kind of get back. I right away peel the gloves off my hands, get ready uh, with the release, hook up. And I remember drawing back on this deer as he was working that bench. He just came by a blowdown and Jared goes, um, no, 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 let down, let down. But my mind was already made up at that point, and uh, I sailed narrow, pretty good distance through the timber and, and hard shot him. He went down the bottom of the hill and crashed, but he was a cedar buck, he was a cedar thrasher. But that's the canoe buck.
And I won't go through all of these stories, but like this one here, um, just real quick, this is a nice buck. I thought he was a lot bigger when uh, he was coming across the hay field. He just had a really big frame to me at that time. And uh, I don't know what it was, but I thought he was, I thought he was huge. And then when I walked up to him, I was like, well, he's bigger than some. So I was still happy with him, but then my season was over and it's again, another early season deer. These are just a bunch of deer that I shot over the years. Uh, they're all random stories and nothing really huge here, but uh, you know, this is part of learning. You don't just start shooting big deer right away. And I certainly didn't. I still don't shoot real big deer, but I shoot decent deer. But you gotta start somewhere and I'm proud of every single one of these. But uh, yeah, let me show you something else. That's really pretty cool. This here, if you all have heard of uh, Chancey Walters, he's an artist. And he's a great hunter, and he also hunts on whitetail adrenaline with Jared Scheffler quite a bit as a late, too. The f season that I killed the canoe buck was the same season that Jared shot that 200 and some odd inches uh, typical out of Kansas with his longbow. The year I killed that real tall buck, and my wife killed, uh, killed this deer when, when she was pregnant with, um, with uh, Camden, my son, I, I was like, you know what? It would be really cool if we have our two bucks because they got mounted together painted together and so Chancey uh, painted this up for me on this turkey feather and even put in the blind that my wife I built for my wife and, and she ended up killing that that big one out of which is pretty special to me oh I got to show you one more thing so I, I'm a I'm a big musky fisherman too uh, I guess more so in the past than as of late because um, I've been raising my kids and I've been kind of dedicating a lot of my time to that but um, I'm I was a competitive musky fisherman since 2004, um, fishing the PMTT and then the late uh, Promac WMT days. So I traveled all over the Midwest chasing muskies around and had some really great success over the years. My wife picks on me for the trophies, but, but you know, and I get it, but they have a lot of meaning behind them too. So she'd really kill me if I put all the plaques out and stuff. She thinks that's super geeky. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, but the reason that I want to bring you over here is because of this shed here. Um, I was fishing muskies on a trip and, uh, you know, um, had to use the bathroom. There's no bathroom out on the lake, but there was an island. And the island was tiny, like a quarter acre. Um, and it was several hundred yards away from shore. Uh, and it was really dense. I got out of the boat and I started, like, looking for a spot to hide. And I almost tripped on this thing. Uh, it was laying just like this. So I uh, did nature's deed and then walked back to the boat. My buddy was sitting there and he's like, what have you got there? I'm like, dude, this thing is a dinger. It's got like 24 inch main beam on it. This thing's awesome. So that's the story of this shed, pretty neat. <laughs>